Okay, today we are playing a game on Watchpoint Gibraltar. The average SR of this game was 3,174, and we will be playing Tracer the entire way through. And we are on the console today. Consider yourself forewarned, we're on the PS4. And our current team composition is Reinhardt, Diva, Genji, Tracer, Lucio, and Anna. So, first tragic thing, main healer is Anna. Anna is one of the worst heroes in the game right now, so we'd really rather not have that. We'd rather have Mercy or Moira. At least you can nano boost Dragon Blade, I guess. Other thing is, it's a little awkward that one of our tanks is Reinhardt, because, like, who on our team is going to be standing behind Reinhardt, right? I guess, like, Anna and D.Va might be sitting on the point with him, but, like, D.Va's going to be going off doing her own thing, so realistically, it's probably just going to be Reinhardt and Anna, like, sitting together. So, like, Winston or Zarya or Arissa might have been a better pick. Like, Reinhardt's just very awkward, because there aren't going to be very many people standing behind his shield, but I guess he can just sit on the objective, so whatever. So there are several many questions in the email today, so let's start on those. Question number one, what is your SR and what do you play? I am mid-masters, I like to flatter myself and tell myself I could get to grandmasters, but I'm too lazy to grind out the necessary games. And since Moira came out, I've played basically nothing but Moira. Prior to that, I played tanks. I played Reinhardt for four seasons until Reinhardt became bad, and then I had to learn how to play other heroes. Oh god, it was a traumatic experience. Um, this season I want to learn how to play Genji, because the Biako skin is, to put it in academic terms, sick nasty, and I love it, so I want to play Genji this season. But, um, Midmasters, Moira, and Tanks. Uh, number two, can I play the stealth flanking Tracer on every map, because I've had moments in certain games where I am pressuring the back lines, but I'm not getting picks, however my team isn't either, so it's very awkward and stressful. That's not really map dependent, that's more team dependent than anything else, like if the enemy team is playing well, it's going to be hard for you to actually get picks on them, because they're going to be, I mean, it's just going to be harder to kill them, because they're going to be playing correctly, that's just kind of how it is. So, it's not really map dependent, it's more um, team dependent. There are maps where it's harder to flank, and well, there are some maps where you definitely won't be stealth, right? Because there are some maps where you can get behind them, but, like, you have to kind of go through them to make it happen. Like, on Eichenwald, they're gonna know you got behind them, right? Because you have to blink through the doorway or the arch to actually get behind them. They, you, they know you're there. But you are, you can still flank on those maps. It's just, you, it's just a little bit harder to get to the flanking position. Um, so you can flank on every map. There are some maps where stealth is not an option because of the geometry of the map. But yeah, you can be flanking on every map. It, and that's kind of like how Tracer is. Tracer's whole thing is that he's very mobile and applies a lot of pressure. So the whole point is to get behind them and start pressuring the back line. That's like what Tracer is good at doing. So, and she can do it on any map. Like some maps it's going to be harder. Um, Eichenwald, uh, Hanamura, these maps, like those kinds of maps are like, harder to do it on because of the just the fact there's kind of only one way through but you can do it on any map like it's if you're not getting any picks it's probably just because they're playing well or um your team isn't really your team can't um your team can't like stand up to them while you're doing the flanking so that your team's just kind of getting fucked while you're doing the flanking that's also going to be an issue sometimes but like it's not really a map issue so much as it is a team issue usually Number three, how do I beat a D.Va? I always seem to die to them. Really, Tracer doesn't kill D.Va unless you get help from other people because D.Va can always kind of just leave if nothing else, right? It's a very time-consuming process to kill a D.Va and Tracer doesn't kill D.Va super quickly. Um, and... Yeah, and even if you are getting close to killing her, she can just, like, shift away and leave and Tracer has no way to keep D.Va there, right? And D.Va also does, like, a lot of burst damage. So if you give D.Va the opportunity, like, if you go up, like, in D.Va's face trying to get headshots on her to break her mech quickly, then she can just, like, fly into you, punch you, use the missiles, and that's, like, most of your health and bare minimum you'll have to recall if you don't die, because D.Va does a lot of burst damage to somebody. So typically you don't, unless you're getting help from other people. The thing with D.Va, though is that as long as you're playing carefully and don't give her an opportunity to do this big burst of damage to you, there's not ve she's not very threatening to you, right? So you can, if there's nothing better for you to be doing, you can just bully D.Va and farm ult charge off of her. And you're not really trying to kill her, it's just that, like, you've got nothing better to do at this moment in time because you can't, like, can't get into a good position or for one reason or another or something like that. 
So you're just taking that time to bully D.Va and build alt charge off of her. In general, Tracer doesn't really want to be fighting the tanks unless there's kind of nothing better for her to be doing at that point in time. But the benefit is also that none of the tanks are a super high risk to Tracer except for Roadhog because of the hook. So as long as you're playing carefully around the tanks, you can just bully around kind of any tank in the game and start generating alt charge. And you're not necessarily trying to kill them unless there's nothing better for you to be doing. It's just kind of, it's some, it's just filling space basically is a bullying around the tank. So typically, typically you don't beat D.Va unless you're getting help from somebody else. Just think of her as an alt battery. She is one of those heroes that's very good at being an alt battery. Uh, number four kind of makes more sense to answer at the end, but I'll talk about it now anyway. Do I spend too long flanking? Some games I have noticed while I'm flanking, my team just are just staggering, so I get picked off easier as the enemy team focuses me fully. I mean, that's not really an issue with spending too long flanking. That's just, like, game awareness, is that, like, you have to notice that your team is... Um, struggling right now so you have to back off and wait for them to regroup or sometimes your team is just not going to be able to like fight them while you're flanking so you might have to change to somebody who plays more around the team because your team just kind of can't survive 5v6 while you're going off flanking basically and it's not really 5v6 but you know what i mean like you have to kind of remove yourself from the fight for a bit and your team kind of have to be able to stand up on one side by themselves so sometimes that's just not gonna happen so sometimes you'll need to change if that's like a recurring issue, but uh, it's not really that's not really an issue with spending too long flanking necessarily. It's more of again more of like a team thing, um, and awareness is like if you're if you're getting picked off because your team was staggered, that just meant you you shouldn't have been playing that aggressively because your team was staggered, so you had to wait longer for your team to be there. Based off the game, you know, spoilers. No, I don't think you spend too long flanking off watching the game, but we'll talk about that later. Number five, how to properly draw attention away from enemies, say, by going to the point so my team can push. I do that but always end up dying too soon because the enemy's burst damage is too high when six people shoot you. I mean, if six people came back to fight you, that's like the dream situation, realistically, because like that means they all left the choke point, right? So you, your team should not have any issues going through at that point. The... Simple answer is, you're not meant to die when you're doing that. That's the entire thing, is that, like, the fact that you die while doing it is where the mistake lies, right? Like, you were meant to survive doing that. And here's the thing. So, the, it, like, the reason this typically happens is, like, very, very common example, Volskaya Industries, Tracer goes around the left-hand side, blinks over the back, gets behind him, just goes and touches the point. Then, like, a fucking Junkrat and a McCree come around the two corners and just, like, you're not expecting them, so you get killed. Before you go and do, like, that kind of thing, where you go and touch the point, take a moment first, before you do that, to look at the enemy team first and see what they've got and see where it is. And then you know what you have to be careful of coming back to fight you. And also you can kind of figure what will come back to fight you because assuming the enemy team plays well, which we should assume they're going to do, but you're also in a high SR, so we'll assume they're going to play reasonably well. If you look at their team and you see McCree and, like, say McCree and Moira, right? Those two will probably come back to try and kill you. Maybe just McCree. So... You can look over there at that at the choke point and go, all right, I see X, Y, Z. X is going to come back to try and fight me. Maybe Y is going to come back to fight me with him. So I need to be aware of that. And then that tells you what you need to do while you're contesting. Because you're not going to, like, ever capture the point, right? Like, they're going to come back to fight you. You just need to know what's over there. So you need to know what's going to come back and you need to, and you need to, so you know how to avoid it and not die, basically. Cause that's the entire point. Like, the, doing that kind of thing in general is fine. You just need to not die while you're doing it. And the way you do that is just by knowing what's going to come and try to fuck you up, basically. Um, so just, basically, this is the thing with flankers in general. It's just, it pays to have a plan, right? If your plan is, I'm going to go and touch the objective to draw aggro back away from the choke point, you need to account for the ri you need to account for what the risks are and think what you're going to do, right? So if you know 
that McCree is going to come back, like, just assume it's Volskaya, right, because this is the easy example. So we know there's a McCree over there at the choke point, we assume McCree is going to come back and fight us. Because we know, we're assuming it's McCree, what we do is, we go stand on the point, but we stand, like, a little further back away from the wall, so that when McCree comes around the corner, he doesn't just flashbang us and take us by surprise, right? So we can stand a little bit further back, and then if, and... You don't necessarily need to fight the guy if you think that you're going to lose the fight. So you can just, like, go back again, right? So you can position more, like, towards the back and then disappear back behind the buildings if um, you get scared that McCree's going to kill you. It's just like, all right, I know McCree's going to pick him back. I don't stand right fucking there because he might just, like, you never know. He might fucking roll around the corner and throw a flashbang at me, right? And before I can react. So you just account for the danger and then plan what you're going to do when the danger comes back for you. Flankers in general, you need to have a plan. Tracer can kind of ad-lib it because of how mobile she is, but it always pays to have a plan, especially like Genji and Reaper who have to use their cooldowns to start flanking. So plan plans are helpful when you're playing any kind of flanker. And number six, how was your day? My day was good, thank you very much for asking. I hope your day was good as well. So now let's start the game. Now you might notice this video is only three and a half minutes long. Don't worry, it's, it's split up into three parts. We're going to have to pull off some subtle video changes as the game goes on. So we just saw Reaper, that's kind of spooky. Here's, tr here's, uh, here's Genji, and... We use recall, might not have needed to use it, but it was also, like, Genji had the chance to kill us right there, but he fucked up and died, so no, 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 no surprises for him right there. From him, rather, right there. So we're gonna bully this Reaper around right now. He's got Wraith form. So this, uh, like, I know what we're doing right here, right? We don't want him to get to the health kit, so we're trying to kill him. By doing what we do right here, we do actually give Reaper an opportunity to kill us, because the way Reaper kills Tracer is he gets one solid meat shot into you, and that's your entire health and damage right there. The way we come to cut this Reaper off is we blink directly in the path of where he's going, and we appear, and then right as he comes out of ray form, we're directly in front of him. He can kill you right there. We end up killing him first, but if he gets that one good shot into you right there, he kills you. So that's a very, it's a very risky maneuver to go like in front of him right there because you do give Reaper the opportunity to kill you right there when by all accounts he's dead to rights. So be careful. That's how Reaper kills you. He gets one good shot into you. So why did we, what, what, what happened here? Uh, we use recall like mad early and then we go, have to go really far to get to health basically. Um, Reaper like, we um we go like a really long way to try and get to safety as well. If th this is you got to account for where you're going to go if you get into a bad time, right? Like typically going across a giant open expanse like across the courtyard as tracer is uh not great because you're just kind of going across the open the entire time. I actually heard McCree try to flashbang us from behind right there, but he managed to, but he missed the flashbang, so great job. Um Kind of getting lucky more than anything else, I think, because we were more focused on the mercy than anything else. But I did hear the flashbang go off behind us. Fortunately, he missed. So we're being very sneaky right now. We've come to head them off at the spawn. We've got pulse bomb, so it's by all accounts free. McCree has clearly not seen us. So we come in and we try and stick him. We miss him. We still get him anyway because he keeps going that way. And by, by a stroke of luck as well, we also get Genji. Um, I don't really have any particular issue with that, because you just, it's, you stagger them, basically, which is never a bad thing, and we end up getting another, um, another one. Pulse Bomb is this way, where it is just, like, a really easy, um, pick on somebody, and there's no reason you can't go and wait by somebody's spawn and then kill them as they come out. They'll be really upset about it as well. Tilting the enemy team is a big deal. You click on three Tracer games, like three videos tagged as Tracer, and look at that. Suddenly it's all full of fucking Tracer. And also uh, the ten most embarrassing video game moments of the decade. This is Uncharted uh, Uncharted 3, for whatever the most recent Uncharted was. It was pretty awkward. I remember that scene. Mostly because, like, it's a Naughty Dog game, and they make you play Crash Bandicoot 1 for a little while in there, and it's just like, well, I mean, 
I guess it, Crash Bandicoot was a cool game and all, but like, I'm playing Uncharted right now, and you're gonna make me do like an entire fucking Crash Bandicoot level. It's weird. So, we've gotten through the first checkpoint. Which is, um, sometimes the hard one, sometimes not. Reinhardt managed to earth chatter a lot of people, so of course we immediately dive on Mercy's face and make her sad. She's upset about that one. Managed to kill Roadhog accidentally. Feels good. Well, not accidentally, but surprisingly. McCree's using High Noon somewhere, but like 1v6, so it didn't really pay off very well, and now he's dead. So we're currently doing the same thing we did before. Um, it's kind of nitpicky, but I don't like the way that we're kind of like looking this way, because if somebody comes up behind you on the right side, or the left side rather, you can get taken by surprise and killed. It'd be a bit of an unusual path for them to take, but... At the same time, like, why even take the risk kind of thing, you know? We're just kind of looking in the art direction we won't see them. So, now, there, we do spend a very long time performing this maneuver, right? And it doesn't really pay huge dividends. So, it's like, if you're gonna pull off, like, the kind of super long waiting maneuver, you have to really know you're gonna get some kind of payoff for it. It's hard to do it from, like, this angle, because this is not the road most traveled. Like, sometimes people go around here, but, like... Well, okay, they go, like, this, typically. But, like, that's not the way... That's not the best way to go, usually, right? And this is the thing, again, we will assume the enemy team is going to play well, because we should always assume the enemy team is going to play well. This doorway is really hard to walk through, because you come out into a fuck tunnel, basically, between the boxes and the doorway. So if the enemy team is losing the fight already, they shouldn't go through this doorway. They should always go up this doorway, because it's much harder to get killed going out that doorway than it is that doorway. So we spend a lot of, we spend time sitting and camping this door, but they're unlikely to go that way. So it ends up not really paying, and then we have to kind of run after them to catch back up to the fight, right? So... Like, if you're gonna pull off, if you're gonna try and do it on this checkpoint, or an, uh, this kind of maneuver on this checkpoint, you're gonna be better off, like, standing kind of here instead, and then you just sit and watch this door in case, in case they come out of it, and then phew, you can just come around here and kill somebody when they come out of that way. It's just we're really far away, and we're kind of, this, like, they're not likely to come this way, so we're not super likely to pick somebody off, and we have to run after them to catch back up to the fight. So it's just awkward the way that we uh, sit waiting for it, basically. You have to really know it's going to pay off as well. The entire enemy team is kind of respawning at the same time during this push, so that is going to make it harder. It's, it's making It makes it a higher risk to actually get anything out of that, but I guess it makes it higher reward, because if they're all coming out at the same time, one pulse bomb could end up killing more people if they all come out together. But it's also going to be harder for you to surprise them at the same time. Usually that kind of play is better performed when it's like, you know Mercy is coming back, right? Like, you know somebody important is going to be coming back by themselves, so you kind of go and bully them by themselves. Dive on McCree with D.Va, she's pretty fucked up. Uh, it's, you just gotta really know it's gonna work out, basically. So we have managed to kill McCree, recall because self-destruct's happening. Like, we're pretty good at playing Tracer. You know, we're in Diamond SR. Like, we've we kind of know how to play the game at this point, right? So, we're pretty much playing Tracer at this point. And it's, it's more nitpicky, complainy things at this point. McCree's fucking blind, doesn't know what's happening to him. We get away with it. Uh, we don't get away with it. He's just, he, it's just easy, because he wasn't really paying attention. So... Here's one of those nitpicky things, right? Don't stick a tank like Roadhog until you've seen him use his very important cooldown, which is take a breather, because take a breather stops you from killing him. Um, similar example, Orissa. Don't stick Orissa until you've made her use Fortify. Or, here's what you do with Orissa, right? You go up to the Orissa, you take her down to half health, then you stick her, even if she uses Fortify, she's dead right? Or, ideally, you get Fortify out of her, then you stick her, she's dead. If the tank's got a cooldown that makes it hard for them to kill, to, to, hard to kill them with burst damage, you need to wait to see them use that cooldown until you actually do it, so don't stick 
Roadhog until you've seen him use pol uh, Take a Breather. Ideally, you don't really want to stick a tank in general because it's kind of, it's just kind of a guaranteed kill or close to on a squishy target. So I'm just never as big of a fan of sticking the tanks. But if you're going to stick a tank, you got to know you can do follow-up damage and you got to know that they aren't going to use their really big defensive ability to completely negate the damage, right? Well, not mostly negate the damage anyway. So we're trying to be very sneaky, very stealthy right now. There's really kind of no, not much point to this because you're not going to get like a huge opportunity right here. You're kind of just better off going out, getting behind them and just trying to bully the Mercy. Like the crouch walk in play. It, it's very slow and not super likely to work out because it, it revolves entirely around someone being out of position, basically, right? Or you seeing somebody go out of position and them not seeing you. As you get higher SR, people are less likely to just be randomly out of position, and they're more likely to be looking for you. So it's just a very slow pay, a very slow play, that is not super likely to work. So you're usually just better off getting in there and trying to bully the person instead. Sometimes it works out, and like, you know, that's cool, but it's not super consistent, and it's a very slow play. It, uh, if it ends up not working out, it takes up a lot of time, right? And time is a finite resource. Oh, right. Did you see Junkrat's body right there? Let's go back and watch that one. Oh, no. Ugh. Head first. Um, in general, if the play, if the play you're making is very slow, you've got to be really certain it's going to work out, because if it doesn't work out, you have wasted a lot of time, basically. So the cat's here, there goes the cat. The cat's fidgety, and he's feeling very sorry for himself right now, aren't you? He's got mites, so he's very upset right now. He's feeling very sorry for himself. Because he had to have some shit shoved down his ear to get the other shit out of his ear. So we, we've basically won at this point. Um, this is, that's m so optimistic. We do that again later, <laughs> like... Uh, you don't do it. Tracer's got the worst throwing arm in the game, right? This, this upsets me a lot, right? This sprightly, time-traveling fit woman has this weak underarm lob. Fucking, like, thousand-year-old grandma Anna has got the best pitch in the fucking world. Just whoosh, all the way across the fucking map. And then you got Tracer. <clears throat> Her throw's terrible. If trying to stick a flying target is very fucking hard. You're better off just waiting. You could, like, throw it on, like, this to, like, guaranteed kill Baby Diva really quickly or something like that. Or stick, like, somebody as they're coming out of the doorway. It's just really optimistic to try and stick the Mercy who's using Valkyrie. So I don't recommend that one. So now we're defending. Look, nothing happened. You didn't see any desktop or anything. This has all been one video. Can you believe it? I know. So we're currently waiting in here. Very patient. There's a Farah out there. That's kind of spooky because Tracer's not very good at killing Farah. You're better at killing Farah than people give Tracer credit for, but it's not exactly a favored matchup. Oh, Anna's upset about that one, and then we managed to recall back up here in time onto the high ground don't really need to recall back up here because it's unlikely to actually pay off. Like, they haven't turned on you right now. Anna was basically by herself and we killed her really quickly. Recalling up here isn't super likely to do anything because we can see most of their team is going down here. Maybe you can kill the Farah while she's floating around, but that's not super likely. So we just kind of end up using recall for not too much. Oh, it was so good, but somebody woke her up. It's all right. She killed herself killing us at the same time. It was very upsetting to watch. I'm like, oh yeah, we managed, we're gonna get this far. Nope. Fucking woke up right before we got to her. Very sad. At least she died, but then she got rezzed, so feels bad, man. Um, so we're coming back around. Things are not going super well out here right now. We're going up here first. Oh look, Mercy's hanging out up here, but not anymore. Oh no. Mercy's going off kinda by herself. So here's the thing with all, with like this kind of thing, right? Here's the thing with this kind of thing. Ooh, what a great sentence. There's no point shooting at them right now. Because you shooting somebody from this far away does no damage to the person. You don't even really get any ult charge off of it, right? You get a little bit, but not much. The main reason to not do this is it tells them where you are, right? Like, by doing this, 
Like, they kind of, they're more focused on this area over here, and, like, that gives you away. The Mercy, like, then knows where you are, right? And the other people you hit know where you are. And they, they can always say, X is behind us now, right? So, doing that, it doesn't really get you anything, because it does very little damage because of how far you are, and it gives you away. So, like, if we, uh, if we just wait instead, and then we see Mercy back up like that, maybe we can go in there and kill her before she even realizes we're there, right? Probably not in this specific circumstance, but... Shooting like that just gives you away, and it doesn't really give you anything for doing it either, so... But giving you away... But giving yourself away can end up leading to you not getting a kill, or end up... leads to you dying instead. So... If they don't know you're behind them, don't shoot from super far away. Doesn't do anything, gives you away is all it does. So we bully the Mercy to death, self-destruct's happening, wait for that to go away, come out, start trying to kill D.Va, because there's kind of no one better for us to be trying to kill right now. Now now there's nothing for us to do but bully the tank, so this is just what we do, basically. Uh, we do switch back and forth between Roadhog and D.Va a couple times. You're better off just focusing the one tank rather than splitting your damage across the two of them. But like, it doesn't really matter in that circumstance. They're both going to die. Try to sneak up on these boys, but they were looking at us, so it's not worked out super well. Uh, uh, we're really not doing anything except making it likely we die. Like, it doesn't take much for Farah to kill you. She kind of, If she gets like a lucky shot and you die suddenly. And you're never going to kill her. Like, it's very, very hard for you to kill her in general, but you're definitely not going to kill her while Mercy is healing her. So it doesn't really do anything except give them the opportunity to kill you, because you'll never kill the Farah, right? So it's just decent risk with very, very, very low reward or chance of reward, right? So it's just kind of not worth doing, right? As you get higher SR, you kind of have to think about these things more, you know... How risky is what I'm doing right now, and how likely is it to pay off? Like, that's very that's very unlikely to work out. The payoff's pretty big, I guess, but it is so unlikely to work out that you just don't want to do it. If I was the Mercy, I'd be like, what is this Tracer doing? Um, but like, if there's, like, very low payoff, or very low chance of payoff, and there's, like, a decent risk attached to it, probably it's probably not worth doing, really. Because that's what matters more at this SR, right? Is these, like, percentage-based plays that pay off over time, right? This, like... This is the kind of SR where you... Where, like, the really small plays that don't seem like they'll ever pay off do start to matter because sometimes those plays do matter and people are generally going to make less mistakes, so it becomes more about these tiny optimizations and minimizations of guilt. Of, uh, guilt? Risk. Uh, Freudian slip? I don't know. So, now, you'd have to react pretty fucking quickly. You can kill Mercy right here, and this is a pretty sick time to kill Mercy, because they've only got 30 seconds left. Now, you would have to react to several things quite quickly. First off, the fact you built up your ultimate. This is obviously the worst possible outcome, but... You have to re react to the fact... Well, I mean, you're keeping track of your ult charge, hopefully, so you're not really reacting to that. You have to react to Mercy suddenly, like, swinging out of position really hard very quickly. But there was the opportunity to just kill Mercy for free right there, because we had our Pulse Bomb. She was, like, literally touching us while we had our Pulse Bomb. And, um... The worst possible outcome occurred instead. I'm sure you don't need, uh a super in-depth analysis of what went wrong there, but there was a... If we reacted a little better, we could have killed Mercy for essentially free. And, you know, that's the kind of... And, like, oh, look, fucking McCree just killed half their team. Hooray! You were probably like, there's no way to defend this checkpoint. Uh, oh, McCree has killed four people. Fuck, never mind. I guess they did defend the checkpoint. Hooray! It all worked out in the end. Do we see the play of the game? Or look, all right. We did not actually see the play of the game. He was he actually like behind them when he did this? It looks like he was behind them when he did that. So good job, McCree. I guess. Hmm. Twenty sound barriers provided out of four casts. That's pretty sick, actually. Nice. All right, so, um, nothing glaringly huge stands out as a recurring thing in this game. In general, we're pretty good at Tracer. I like how aggressive we're being in most situations. Uh, we take a few slow plays that, you know, you got to be pretty sure they're going to work out if you're going to take them, but, like, 
that's up to you you with the time if you think it's gonna work right it's very easy to sit here divide it like completely subject like um subtracted from the experience like oh yes yeah, so, hmm, and here we see we could have done xyz yeah well you also have to play the game at the time right like i ain't got to worry about playing the game you have to recognize things in game while playing the game which is the hard part you can know all the theory but doing it in game is very different um like we're i like how aggressive we're being right like we're being very proactive which is the important thing with tracer basically and then like the it's just like smaller things which is usually how it is at this sr there's usually no glaringly huge things anymore because those are typically ironed out by like plat basically so Thank you very much for watching. If you did, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer. If you felt I answered any of your questions from the email inadequately, please let me know and I'll try to expand further. Uh, join our Discord if you haven't already. You can ask questions more directly or uh, shitpost with us, basically, as we typically do. And I hope you found the video helpful.